fundamentals of America's economy is still very strong. But I still believe the fundamentals of our economy are strong. I don't believe we're headed into a recession. When we come out of this recession, and we will, I believe the fundamentals of this economy are strong, and I believe they will remain strong. I still believe the fundamental principles and foundation of our economy is strong. In our economy, I think our fundamentals are strong. The underpinnings of our economy are strong. The fundamentals are strong of our economy. I believe that the fundamentals of our economy are strong. So our fundamentals, I still believe, are very strong. hear this constant line complaining when, about our loss of our competitiveness, uh, America in decline. We've never had more natural advantages than we have today. Uh, we've sort of become a nation of liars. We have a campaign alert today. John McCain is distancing himself from comments made by his economic advisor, Phil Graham. Graham, in an interview with the Washington Times, seemed to dismiss worries about the economy, saying we had become, quote, a nation of whiners. He also said we were in a, quote, mental recession. Moments ago, the McCain campaign said Graham's comments are not representative of McCain's views. As far as putting additional money in American taxpayers' pocket, that's fine, because a lot of this is psychological. Fundamentals of our economy are strong. The fundamentals of our economy are strong. A firm conviction that America's economy, the fundamentals of it are strong. The fundamentals of America's economy are strong. But I am confident that the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Part of the mental depression, this is a mental recession. Part of the problem we have, of course, in any recession is psychological. Part of this is psychological. I think psychologically, and a lot of our problems today, as you know, are psychological, confidence, trust. I have a fundamental belief that the, that the, that I have a great belief that the fundamentals of our economy are very strong. Very strong. Fundamentals are, of our economy are strong. I want to ask you this morning, what did you mean when you said the fundamentals of the economy are strong? Well, what I obviously was saying, and I believe, is the American worker is the most productive, the most innovative, they're the fundamental of our economy. I have a great belief that the fundamentals of our economy are very strong. Very strong. We do have a senior campaign source that is confirming to us that Sarah Palin, the governor of Alaska, is going to appear here with John McCain, and John McCain will announce that she will be his running mate on the Republican ticket. And the truth is that Sarah Palin is no way good enough. We know that the, the, the President Bush was a C student at Yale. <laughs> so did, do you remember your GPA at school? <laughs> My, my GPA earned me fifth from the bottom of my class at the Naval Academy of Status. So, but I can assure you, <laughs> on, tra on today's standards, it would be barely passing. Senator John McCain picked to announce his surprise choice of Alaska Governor Sarah Palin as his running mate. She's exactly who I need. She's exactly who this country needs. Sarah insight into Russian actions, particularly in the last couple of weeks, does the, does the proximity of the state give you? There are next door neighbors, and you can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska. Well, explain to me why that enhances your foreign policy credentials. Well, it certainly does. As Putin rears his head and, and uh, comes into the airspace of the United States of America, where, where do they go? It, it's Alaska. My choice is to take a stand and affect change. Do you agree with the Bush Doctrine? In what respect, Charlie? The Bush, well, what, do you, what do you interpret it to be? His worldview. We know we can affect positive change outside government. I guess a small town mayor is sort of like a community organizer, except that you have actual responsibilities. I spent uh, considerable time ridiculing your experience as a community organizer. I wonder what your reaction is to that, but also, how is community organizing relevant experience for the presidency? This is very curious. So, this is work I did three years ago. They haven't talked about the fact that I was a civil rights lawyer. They haven't talked about the fact that I taught constitutional law. They haven't talked about my work in the state legislature, the United States Senate. 
They're talking about the three years of work that I did right out of college, as if that's I'm making the leap from uh, two or three years out of college into the presidency. I'm just going to ask you one more time not to belabor the point. Specific examples in his 26 years of pushing for more regulation. I'll try to find you some and I'll bring them to you. Oh, 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 oh. This world of threats and dangers, it's not just a community and it doesn't just need an organizer. Do they think that the lives of those folks who are struggling each and every day, that working with them to try to improve their lives is somehow uh, not relevant to the presidency? I think maybe that's the problem. That's part of why they're out of touch and they don't get it because they haven't spent much time working on behalf of those folks. So you're talking about the mocking, those kind of things like that. But not only that, my parents are watching Reginald and Melvin Martin in Houston, Texas. And let me tell you something, they were community organizers. And this audience here, she mocked community organizers and this audience laughed at them. Don't be surprised if Obama and Biden says, you know what, it's community organizers for keeping people from losing their homes in subprime crisis. It's community organizers for keeping people from keep, uh, having their lights turned on. It's community organizers for the ones trying to save your job. I told Congress thanks, but no thanks for that bridge to nowhere up in Alaska. But it's now pretty clearly documented. You supported that bridge before you opposed it. You were wearing a t-shirt in the 2006 campaign, showed your support for the for the bridge to nowhere. You were solidly for it for quite some period of I was, time until I was Congress for pulled the plug and after it became a national embarrassment. And that is what I'm doing, keeping our eye on the ball. That represents sound priorities. Remember, they include energy independence and smaller government and national security and freedom. And I know when it's time to pass the ball for victory. And I've given my reasons now. When you were a mayor of Wasilla, you hired a very prominent lobbyist to get Wasilla money. We did. We paid $30,000 for a lobbyist who was in D.C. Just a greater appreciation, I think, for um, what other candidates go through. You know, it's, pr it's pretty brutal. Probably invite criticism for even doing this, too, but at least this was fun. Governor Palin's office is now telling our NBC News desk that a photographer asked her if she wanted that as a backdrop, and she replied, no worries. Ultimately, what the bailout does is help those who are concerned about the health care reform that is needed to help shore up our economy. Um, helping the, oh, it's got to be all about job creation too, shoring up our economy and, and putting it back on the right track. So, health care reform and reducing taxes and reining in spending has got to accompany tax reductions and tax relief for Americans. And trade, we have we've got to see trade as opportunity, not as uh, a competitive, um, scary thing, but one in five jobs being created uh, in the trade sector today. We, we, we've got to look at that as more opportunity. All those things under the umbrella of job creation. We can all learn from our selfless, selfless troops. They're bold and they don't give up and they take a stand. We look forward to swearing in Sean Parnell up there in Fairbanks at the conclusion of our governor's picnic at the end of the month. Really, we've just got to put first things first. And first things first, as governor, I love my job. And finally, I pulled the most important people in my life, my kids. When McCain asked you to take the number two spot on the ticket, for a moment, did you think no? I did not. I answered him yes because I have the confidence in that readiness and knowing that you can't blink. You have to be wired in a way of being so committed to the mission, the mission that we're on. And I really don't want to disappoint anyone with this announcement, not with the decision that I have made. All I can ask is that you trust me with this decision. My decision was also fortified during this most recent trip to Kosovo and Landstall to visit our wounded soldiers overseas. This decision comes after much consideration, a prayer and consideration, but I'm doing what's best for Alaska, and I have explained why. Don't explain, your friends don't need it, and your enemies won't believe you anyway. But I've given my reasons. It's no more politics as usual. And I'm taking my fight for what's right for Alaska in a new direction. And I will support you because we need you and you can affect change and I can too on the outside. And they're willing to call an audible and pass the ball when it's time so the team can win. And that's what I'm doing. We need those who will respect our constitution. We're going to be in really great hands, the capable hands of our Lieutenant Governor Sean Parnell. I will always be standing by, ready to assist. Thank you, and God bless you, Alaska.